David Ellery, the referee, goes off to a Champions League fixture, Paris Saint-Germain and Bayern Munich on Wednesday as Manchester United move back across the Pennines to play Gothenburg without. Eric Cantona, of course, is suspended. But for all concerned, a mighty occasion to experience before the midweek intensity. Manchester United defend the former cop end. Twelve tension-packed meetings over the previous four seasons. Not one victory for Leeds. Though many of the games have been at very narrow margins. Steve Bruce and Gary Pallister in particular have been picked out by the Leeds players as men who've kept them at bay so emphatically in many of those games. Well, Whelan and Masinga have the main responsibility of unhinging them today. Here's David May, who's been here, of course, with Blackburn. Yeah, if you're successful at Ellen Road over a period of time, Martin, that's based on sound foundations. And certainly Pallister and Bruce give Manchester United that. Players from both sides are uh, pretty delighted with the conditions up the foot, although there's a uh, kick there by John Lukic, this brand-new pitch played in the summer by Leeds United. Only a very small number of rugby league games scheduled to be played here over the winter months. The Leeds reserve team are playing their games away at Halifax, so not with one of the worst surfaces in the Premiership. Should be mightily improved in the months ahead. Certainly looking good at the moment. Cantona. Here's Kanchelskis. Worthington, well known by Howard Wilkinson, of course, he signed in for the third time. And a miscue by McAllister. Well, Howard Wilkinson has clearly set out a stall here based on a more attacking philosophy than in recent matches with that Chris Fairclough factor not being used from the start. So Cantona not man-marked. Will it open it up for Leeds or will it open it up for Manchester United? William chasing with youthful exuberance. Michael connecting well off the head of Carlton Palmer, Giggs is up quickly to support Hughes, Weatherall keeping calm, not easy in these circumstances, and you couldn't say the same about Lukic, who that's really made a meal of his kick. That's what happens, Mark, when Eric Cantona drops off the front like that, and they play balls up to Hughes. Giggs knows he has licence just to run in, run in off that left side and link up with Mark Hughes whenever possible. Played by White. I enjoyed that in particular because the opponent who was slipped was Cantona. McAllister again, but it's more resilient in the tackle and suddenly there are four forward for Manchester United here. Paul Ince a little bit slow to make up his mind as to what to do. He had Giggs totally unattended to the left and here comes Gary Kelly. White in close support. Kelly trying to whip it in, and it flies behind for a corner of Kelly's fellow countryman, Dennis Irwin, indeed rivals in the World Cup for that right-back position. But glorious opportunities for both sides to make something more. Collins, a little bit hesitant, couldn't make his mind up, and I think Gary Kelly chose the wrong ball. David White, totally free ahead of him, should have just slipped him in. Worthington with a corner, hanging it up towards Weatherall. But let's hope that's a little sign of things to come in this match. Said both were ambitious, both wanted to go forward. That was shown there. One moment Manchester United, four or five men in attack, and an instant the attack was going the other way, and Leeds had five white ships forward. 
Howard Wilkinson feeling that at this stage in the season, many, many matches to come, that it's uh, worth the gamble, if that's what it is, to be more adventurous. I said at the start, Selhurst Park has been a terrible ground for Leeds in the past against Crystal Palace, against Wimbledon, even against Charlton when uh, they were in the top division. So it meant a lot here to win that last league game in South London. So those players uh, almost forcing the manager's hand, really, into picking them again for this one. to cope with Mark Pierce there. Hughes has this nagging groin pain that might need some surgery. Obviously, he hopes not. As do that man, he's in the end. It's one player he wouldn't want to lose. It's Barry Vance, quite rightly said, so much stats off of Mark Hughes. Over Whelan, judged well by Bruce. Losing out to Ibs. Cantona taking over to the expected chorus of disapproval. May. Hughes there again. They can build from him. It's well read by Worthington. Who's been as consistent as anyone in the early weeks of his new club. Tony Dorigo has been uh, checked regularly this week. His pace against Kanchelskis might uh, have been a factor had Dorigo pulled up the fitness in time. He didn't. Diggs in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> what a lovely knockback from Noel Whelan. He was in total control of that header. I bet. They got away with that. White. Whelan's gone to the right, the space White's vacated, he flicks off Pallister. Weatherall has a problem with Mark Hughes, as is so often the way for defenders against this most persistent of forwards. Palmer didn't want to be regarded as a defensive player at Sheffield Wednesday, Wallace losing his balance before the ball came. Worthington, pass McClare to McAllister. White making a run from right to left. McAllister in the end had to wait for Gary Kelly. Five in the centre in the white of Leeds United. Whelan is one of them, the man in four. Three goals in his last three games, his first three goals in league football. Gary McAllister, sorry, Martin, had a problem there because although they've got White and Wallace on this side, they were so narrow, narrow and McAllister had the ball, they really had no option wide. Actually, Ryan Giggs did well, Andy, because uh, White wanted to make space for, for Kelly and Giggs blocked it off. Flicked on by Whelan, by May, which Michael had to stretch. He's played in this fixture four times, Eric Cantona, once for Leeds, three times for his present employers, and he hasn't scored in it. Wallace, speed. Well, to measure it for Wallace, he's done that. Well played, Steve Bruce. He saw the danger at the near post. Good movement from Leeds. And a quick corner. White. Just too far ahead of Whelan. That was a great ball, and it really was from David White. Teasing and tempting. Just well, needed someone flying in at it, Martin. We talk about premiership pace. This is top of the range. The ball flying from one end to the other. And... Palmer looks left at the free kick. Wallace. Ron McClare. Divert it behind another Leeds corner. Again, they want it short. Again, Manchester United don't react quickly. And Noel Whelan denied at the far post. And Chelskis. 
just going to read the spin better here. It was Gibbs and Worthington. It comes for Kanchelskis. Well, Andre Kanchelskis has been the top gun, really, when Manchester United have played Leeds recently. But this is the header from the corner. Had he scored here, you bet your life, Alec Ferguson would have been out the bench. They got caught only a minute earlier with a short corner. Now look at that. I think Noel Whelan's probably just taking his eye off that. Because it looked to me as if it was dropping a clear header, and it looked as if he just took his eye off it and didn't make good connection. That's a real let-off for Manchester United. The singer. Such a change in his life to come to a new culture, a new society, great differences. But out there, the goalposts are still in the same place. Worthington, the sink is very good in the air. Oh! First timer from White. Well, that's a brilliant position for David White. When you're playing on the opposite side, you're a wide man. When people are playing the ball into the box, then you must have your man from the opposite side getting in these sort of positions for anything dropping down. And just look how well he hits it. He hits it too well. He gets no bend in it at all. Straight as an arrow. So the man who came from Manchester City in that swap with David Rowcastle. Well, Alex Ferguson, who gave us the impression that he'd been talking of a tense tactical battle to his players before he found out the Leeds plans. Looks concerned here about how his side not quite settling as the manager would like to the problems that a freewheeling Leeds United have posed. Thus, not quite settling as the manager would like to the problems that a freewheeling Leeds United have posed thus far. Speed. Masinga. Speed. Wallace. Whelan actually took Bruce out. Was still able to recover, or he was allowed to recover, should we say? Wallace couldn't bypass him with the cross. Allowed is the word, Martin. There's no way he should have been allowed to get a challenge. And look, he's got time, he's got space, Rod Wallace. It takes too long, and that gives the centre back an opportunity. This is the type of start that Leeds are renowned for here at Ellen Road. Took them three or four minutes, actually. And now they're in the stride. United are going to have to put the shutters up. No, Whelan in need of attention, which what might be a dislocated finger. Then goes on with White. Weatherall, it's in! A goal that Leeds certainly deserve. And it's come from David Weatherall with a miss kick in truth, but they won't mind that. It's been on the cards, Martin. Manchester United have looked very nervy from corners. I don't know why, but look at this. Five red shots get nothing on it, nothing at all, in between the lot of them. And David Weatherall, he didn't want to hit it well, he would probably have missed it had he hit it well. He kicks it into the ground, Schmeichel's diving for the shot, properly struck, and it bobbles into the corner. They've not looked happy, watch how many red shots this bypasses. One, two, three, four, five of them before it arrived at Weatherall. Foul by White. Well, just what Leeds have been looking for. Not just today, but they've gone five matches against Manchester United without scoring prior to this. More than two and a half years. May. Weatherall, whose promotion really in the ranks here, reflected by his upgrading in numbers from... Uh, I think it was 18 last season, he's number six now. <laughs> Worthington. Headed back by Ince, Palmer is there. Only as far as Ince. Palmer had to bite in once more, he did it effectively enough. There was very little room for error. Here comes Whelan with that damaged finger put back in place. A powerful run. Just looking at that, that attack there. One, two, three, four, seven white shots. Either up level or wheeling or ahead of them. I mean, I think that shows you the intent in this lead side today, and I think that's a major difference. 
and, and why the status of positive. They've taken a positive attitude from the first minute. In fact, from before that, with Howard's selection. Well, it was all very much kept under wraps here, but I bumped into Gary McAllister around lunchtime. I said, I just hope you're not going to be too defensive. Don't you worry about that, he said. And Leeds have been as good as the captain's word, as good as the manager's instructions so far. Whelan flags up against Masinga. Oh, that was tight. Good movement from Leon, though. But look how many red shirts, Mark, we were talking about. How many does he go past? What, four of them? Drops down there, but Bruce, it, hit, it arrives at Steve Bruce at an awful height. It's about hip height, neither easy to volley clear, or he can't head it clear. It's an awful height for him. The best mi miss hit David Weatherall's ever had. Cantona. Lovely ball for Giggs, lovely save for Leeds from Lukic. Did neither one thing nor the other, in my opinion, there. Ryan Giggs, it's a super run and an exquisite ball from Cantona. Now, you get it up or you hit it with power. Ryan did neither there. Back from uh, an excellent performance for Wales against Albania in the European Championship qualifier. An improvement, I think he would feel, on the way he's been playing for his club. He looks full of confidence now. He looks a different lad in the last couple of weeks, Mark. He looks as if he's, he's safe and confident about his own ability to go and entertain and go and make things happen on a football pitch. The kid's only 20. But we forget that at times. And Cantona is certainly trying to take some control here and create an equaliser for the champions. Champions of 94, champions of 93, the champions of 92 moving forward here. Of course, they did it at the expense of Manchester United. White. Rather obvious. Stopped by Giggs. Cantona. Giggs goes to the left. Coming from the right is Mark Hughes. Can he reach it? Only at the moment of impact from the tackle from Palmer. Who does play at the back like a midfield man, doesn't he? Gambles on his skill on the ball. Oh, he's got telescopic legs, Carlton Palmer. I've known him since he was a kid. And he, we used to call him, I think, nicknames like Bambi and that in those days. He was just all legs, and I think. He's so difficult. You think you're past him, or you think he's away, and suddenly those long legs come out. And they're there. There he goes, twisting again. <laughs> he really is all arms and legs, Carlton. But a true competitor. And I think he'll grow into this position. I think he's needed convincing himself that he's a centre-back. And a spell there now at a new club doing well Let may just convince him of that. Well, Leeds supporters rarely get more excited than they are at the moment. Their side, their favourites are leading the old enemy. I think that's the thing, they're only leading them. I mean, it's been a positive start from Leeds, but it hasn't won them the game yet. A lot of hard work to do yet. Cantona checking off and able to get the ball, not under immediate challenge. He shrugs aside Wallace through to Kanchelskis, we looked at the linesman. Flag stayed down, Kanchelskis crosses. Away by Kelly. Back it comes through Irwin, former Leeds player, of course. Given a free transfer here, a long time ago now. Masinga. Wheeler. Able to take his time. Wallace had a look, decided it was Kanchelskis and wasn't going to get involved in a sprint. Keep ball here as suddenly the uh, players have to draw breath. <laughs> David Ellery will get picked for that. Books David May. Yeah. Howard Wilson will be pleased to see his team with the confidence to pass it about there, Martin. But he'll also be conscious of the fact he won't want to see too much of it. He'll also want to see an end product. Not overpassing, not overplaying. Deep ball from Worthington. Out characteristically from Schmeichel. Cantona. It's White curbing the threat from Giggs that time. Oh, 
Oh. Well, that was McClare laying out Mark Hughes inadvertently and not for long. He didn't take the full count. Well, we've got a game on today, all right. You bet your life on that. <laughs> Obviously, Brian McClare knows Mark Hughes a lot better than we do. He didn't even go and see if he was all right. He would know that it takes something more than that to keep that man down for long. He's probably fired him up a little bit, though. Well, they're on the metal, Manchester United, at the moment, because Leeds fueled even further as they look for this elusive victory against today's opponents by uh, an early goal from David Weatherall. McAllister, Wheeler, plenty of space for White. So too much of the ball to Ince. Hughes. Not long enough for Kanchelskis. Too much grass on the Leeds pitch. We weren't saying that last season. Worthington. Oh, it's dropped by Schmeichel. Whelan. Luck for Manchester United. It just rolled away from the young forward. And England's Gary Pallister was able to deal with the problem Schmeichel unsettled by the curl on the cross maybe a gust of wind well he'll tell you it was a gust of wind he won't admit to making errors like that Peter Schmeichel but it just looked like a lack of concentration Worthington but that's only given to Hughes here's Kanchelskis Well, the passion between these two teams is always predictable, but very few of the matches have been as free-flowing as this one. Cantona, Hughes for McClare. Need to nick it gently beyond Weatherall, but the touch was far too strong. The run was good. Joined up wonderfully well with Mark Hughes there. As you said, the only thing wrong was the touch. A little bit too much weight on it. sort of deal he's got with the boot manufacturers. <laughs> Open to offer. <laughs> <laughs> that is Noel Whelan. With odd footwear. Halfway through the first half. Halfway through, Mark, they've not drawn breath yet, the players. I just wonder when we'll get a, if we will get a, a lull in the action at any time this half. And it's been frantic from the first whistle. Just to remind you, in recent matches, Howard Wilkinson has used Chris Fairclough in this dogged defensive role against Cantona. It's led to Leeds being short of firepower. They very nearly won at Old Trafford on New Year's Day. And now they'll go. They were beaten here comfortably by Manchester United in April, which looked a big hurdle for Alec Ferguson's team in the context of the championship race a home straight in that respect. There's a bit of a cakewalk then, and that's stuck in the minds of the Leeds players. But Palmer taking far too long. He got back. It looked as though he played the ball, but David Ellery didn't think so. I thought so. He made a mistake. He dwelt in the ball far too long. His team are playing well, yes, but he can't stand and dwell and look around because people at Paul Ince will just rob you very quickly and put you under pressure. Certainly not with your centre-back. I don't know whether he's been booked for the tackle, it surely can't be. Whether he said something to David Ellery after that, we don't know. And Ryan Giggs, of course, rifled in a free kick for Wales on Wednesday. And Ryan Giggs, of course, rifled in a free kick for Wales on Wednesday. The 
1,800 or so Manchester United fans who have officially got tickets today will be hoping that something similar is about to occur. He certainly looks as if he's setting up for a strike. If you look at the top of the screen, we've got four against three at the back post, Manchester United, four red shirts against the three white. Diggs goes for goal, Wall does well. Now it's looking to the left and Cantona. Clip that surprised Lukic because it was very much overhead. Whelan, plenty of runners inside of him. Masinga. Wallace, up comes Gary Kelly from right back. Keeps trying to keep him company. Two of them already, the young brigade have had terrific tussles in earlier matches this year. Kelly's throw, Speed trying to flick it on. Hughes judged it well, McClare, and now Kanchelskis. Well, as I said earlier, he's done damage to Leeds in each of the last three seasons, and that was an opportunity. I think centre-backs have got to come and clean that out and header it, because if they don't, the people at Mark Hughes do that. But McClare's is a chance. I think his first touch let him down. But from then on, it was always a difficult angle from Andre Kanchelskis. I know he did score from about that range against Nottingham Forest a little earlier, but the angle's always difficult, and McClare's was definitely the best chance. Still 1 0 to Leeds United. Diggs, Cantona. Overall coming a long way to be with him. Cantona holds him off. And that slips speed. Gonna need some help now. He doesn't get it. Wallace. That's too strong. Back from Bruce. Worthington. McAllister. He did well to withstand that and get the pass away. David Lurie letting the game go on when he could have penalised the Manchester United man. White. Hughes coming to uh, give Manchester United an outlet. Kanchelskis. Speed dropping back to try and give Worthington some help. Giggs with the freedom to work across from the left hand side. Hughes, Cantona, there's nobody on the left, in fact, for the Reds. Marched off well by uh, Whelan to White, trying to slip it through for Masinga. I just don't think we can keep this base up in this game. <laughs> I'd love to think you could. No, certainly not for 90 minutes. May. Well, Cantona sometimes goes far post and scored with a header against Wimbledon in Manchester United's last game. It just come out to the edge of the area for a ball rolled into feet. May didn't see him. Kelly. Carrying the fight forward, very much in the manner of Leeds United on this evidence. Speed. McAllister. Kelly trying to make a better angle. And of course, Leeds won the championship with a very direct style. It's a more measured approach, you feel, than hard work with his men this season. Times change, tactics change. Janczelskis. Hughes. Giggs was waiting and was free. This time it's Palmer picking up the pace. And on he goes. Speed. Oh, the midfield markers are having a torrid time. Wallace. A dive. 
Ince applauds the referee for allowing the game to go on. There are no midfield markers in this game, Mark. The game is just flowing from Ince in. Cantona out juggling Palmer. Almost, almost. As if they needed reminding. There was a man on the half hour mark. Just a reminder to say, you know, don't imagine that I'm dead and buried and we're dead and buried. Wonderful skill. Choked the shot, just a fraction into the ground. Well, he is one of the game's smoothest operators. And Howard Wilkinson had him here for around nine months. Just looking at the bench, it looked like they were having words with Brian Dean. I don't know whether there's something wrong with either Whelan or Basinga. Dean's certainly coming on. It's David White, in fact. Half an hour gone, White is hurt. Brian Dean played in the opening game of the season, but then fell foul of an infected elbow. But there was the feeling here that he was going to be left out in any case to uh, allow Masinga a run. Well, he's back now. Masinga, I can tell you, isn't 100% fit himself. There he goes. Oh, weather all again. It's <laughs> another missed kick and it just nearly floated in. Well, he may not be fit. The singer mark, but that doesn't stop him climbing and making a nuisance of himself. And that's exactly what he did in this situation. Gets up there, doesn't get a clean header on it, but look how difficult he's making it for Steve Bruce. Weather all comes on it, completely misses it again. And look at that, almost drops in the top corner. Well, Brian Dean has uh, gone perhaps surprisingly into the uh, David White position, right hand side. Manchester United left to drop of the shoulder from Ryan Giggs. It's not a familiar role for Dean. But he has had his moments, of course, in the past against Manchester United. Remember the very first Premier League goal scored by Dean for Sheffield United then. And they beat Manchester United, Bramall Lane, a couple of years ago. I think that also, Howard Wilson won't want to change too much, Mark. I think it's a blow to them that they've lost David White. They were looking good, they were looking confident. They've had to make a change, now one change, OK, but wouldn't want to tinker too much. Might just be regretting now that he didn't have Gordon Strachan as a substitute. Strachan is sure he is. I'm sure he is, but you don't know, do you? Gordon is now uh, responsible for some coaching as well here. And looking very managerial down in the dugout. Very Sign good. of things to come. Very good. May. The only thing we should have this under control. John Lukic only got as far as the fifth game of last season before he lost his place. It's game number five today, of course. He's out for nearly five months. The one thing Brian Dean does give them, the obvious thing, is an extra six foot three up there. If anyone wants to launch a ball over him and Dennis Irwin, then they can do it. Just as we were saying, they're not quite as direct. Of course, <laughs> they uh, have the ammunition now to uh, play some longer balls. I was just from left to right. I mean, I'm sure at half time, if they haven't that already done so, Nigel Wellington on the ball now, Martin. Further up the field, will be told if you get a chance, then look for that diagonal ball for Brian Dean on Dennis Irwin. Test him a little bit. Palmer. Here's Giggs. McLaren moving through the middle. Hughes. Cantona. Here's McLaren. Eleven minutes to go to half time. Giggs to take the corner. The goal kick and a chance for us to catch up on the news of David White's injury from Nick Collins.
Well, Martin, David White's damaged his left ankle, possibly the ligaments. He's being examined by the club doctor at this moment. Plant's neck. White did have ankle surgery at the end of last season. One can only hope that that's not a continuation of that problem. work from him again and expert handling by Lukic otherwise that question of whether it was handball really would have been opened up well it would have been furious but this is much better from Ryan Giggs isn't it makes a space goes one way jinks the other and really hits that with some venom that's a much better strike felt the earlier chance warranted the same type of treatment and the goalkeeper who uh, like Peter Schmeichel has two championship medals Lukic of course one here with Arsenal. Well, he's taking it all in and wondering perhaps how he's going to adjust things at half time or whether it's just a case of believing in his own strike force. I think the latter. I don't think there's too much you can do. I think the latter. I don't think there's too much you can do what she'd want to do, just keep it going. Don't lose another goal is the obvious thing. The singer, Wheeler. Cues. Leclerc. Wellington just slightly quicker off the mark than Cantona. Cues gets it back. Leclerc. May joining in. Kicks. A little over elaborate. Kelly. So many Manchester United players. Six of them have been committed to attack. Open spaces for Leeds to exploit. Singer on the right this time, looking to set up Dean. Yeah, good options at the edge of the box. McAllister, Kelly were both there, Martin. That was a poor cross. Cantona, who's been away captaining France, not without controversy. <laughs> Would you expect anything else? Media relations haven't uh, been in full working order. It's kicks. Hughes. There's no width on the right hand side. Hughes uh, also looked left as well. Irwin had gone well forward. Single track back with him. Palace then. Oh, hell, that was very rash, very enthusiastic, really, and he knows he's. Uh, out of order, the South African, and he's going to get booked for it. One of two players from that country, brought here by Howard Wilkinson. Lucas Redebi, the other, whose work permit has just come through, and is in the squad for this game, although not in the final 14. Yeah, he gets carried away. He's done well before, Spanish Sermon back, and he's 
got all his momentum going forward. Lovely skill from Gary Pallister, and he hangs the right leg out. David Ellery quite right to show the yellow card. He's a very phlegmatic man, Gary Pallister. Sometimes uh, he looks too laid back out there in the heat of the battle. And he's uh, understood the nature of the challenge, that it wasn't really malicious. And happily for him and for Manchester United, no lasting damage. Hughes. Absolutely crucial for Leeds to hang on to their lead until half-time. There has been an incredible first half, Mark. There hasn't been a player been able to put their foot in their ball, stop for a fraction of a sec to have a look, because if they have done, they've been whacked, they've been tackled, they've been harried. It's been incredible stuff. Well, a truly super Sunday for you here today, and a marvellous Monday, we hope. All the signs are there. Tottenham Hotspur. Talk of the talk of the capital. Against Southampton, Bruce Grubbler in their goal. At 7 o'clock tomorrow on Sky Sports. Not to be missed. Dean trying to be the uh, midfield maestro with a through ball there for McAllister. The other outfield substitute is uh, Chris Fairclough, who we've uh, mentioned several times already today. Leeds not wanting to reduce their attacking strength and White had to come off. Well, you don't get to be champions and keep the championship without being uh, superb competitors. You can see the fire in the eyes of Paul Instead. This is not a place to lose for Manchester United. <laughs> oh, no. Good place for the faint-hearted, Anna. Hughes. This is Irwin. And then McAllister. Speed, and of course, has played at left back. And was almost too comfortable there for the good of his goalkeeper. We had an early look, a very early look before the, the back pass. But look at Giggs coming in, he knows it's coming. And look at the pace. He couldn't see Giggs, but he nearly paid for it. And of course, Giggs uh, knows all about speed, his Welsh international colleague. Another Welsh from Hughes. Pallister played for England, but his place back with Steve Bold being injured on Wednesday against the United States. Wallace, warning from the crowd, not heeded. It's lovely ball, oh, Cantona possibly could have taken it off. Kicks to line it up, stops the shot. But it hasn't happened for Manchester United yet, but that doesn't mean to say it won't. No, they're threatening. I, I just wondered whether they needed the touch in it. I thought the ball was laid there, you know, to hit first time. He took the touch, the chance was gone, choked the shot. I thought the pace on the delivery from Cantona was just right for a first time shot. Try and pick out, but he's got it to Masinga. He's left Kanchelskis <laughs> almost to his own surprise. McLaren Ince has Whelan again, but it's too abrupt the challenge for the referees like it. And to last minute of the official 45 with David Ellery like so many of the referees this, these days very likely to uh, 
add on a minute or two. Erwin. Bruce. Well read by Palmer. The singer. For Whelan, beautiful ball. Noel Whelan driving forward for Leeds United. Masinga, he's missed it. It comes out for Kelly. Manchester United not off the hook yet. Dean is there. He can turn, he can shoot, but he can't score. Well, you don't get many better chances against Manchester United than Phil Masinga had there. It's a lovely ball from him. Look at the way he gets himself into the box. Whelan picks him out beautifully. Go on, tap it in. Through his legs. It comes back in. Get Kelly's a hopeful shot. Drops to Dean, and between them, Schmeichel and Bruce clear it. I think Steve Bruce got a touch in it. Stoppage time. Worthington's corner. Masinga knocks it down brilliantly. Oh, and it's over the top from Brian Dean from under the crossbar itself. Well, there you go. It just shows you. I said they don't come any easier than Masinga's chance. This is equally as easy, and what a miss this is. Right on half time. All he has to do is head it down and leads a two up. Look at his position, he's not offside. Go on, get up above it and head it down. Takes his eyes right off it. Right off it. When you take your eyes off a ball, invariably you'll put it up in the air. Dean does head it down there to McAllister. Owen flew in at him. Players sorted it out themselves. May. United pleased to win a header defensively. Well, it's been such an exciting start to the new season in this division, particularly, and it's been encapsulated here in the first half at Ellen Road. So much that's good about the current game. Hughes. Hughes powering in again. Bruce stopping uh, Leeds getting out. Crowd want the half time whistle now. The vast, vast majority of them. It's Palmer. Couldn't put much power into that. There wasn't much pace on the ball. Kanchelskis, Cantona, knocking it off to May. Wheeling up the field, but even he's coming back now. Bruce, the pressure well and truly on. The block by Worthington. Whistle goes, half time. Standing ovation all around Ellen Road. David Weatherall with the one goal for Leeds United. Will it be enough? They really should have added to it Phil Massinga and then Brian Dean right at the end of the half. Fantastic fair. Leeds United one, Manchester United nil at half time. Leeds looking to make it 13th time lucky against Manchester United today. They lead by a goal in the 13th minute. Howard Wilkinson knows there's a lot of work to be done. But there is a real air of optimism about Elland Road. Leeds remember the highest place club last season, which didn't qualify for Europe, so they don't have that distraction in the challenge for domestic trophies and local bookmakers have been busy dealing with the speculators who see Leeds United as a good bet Wallace pass from Gary Speed just uh, undernourished slightly Dean with the throw
saw something sinister in that from Gary Kelly. I don't know where he just grabs his, his foot here. He, he feels it's a free kick. David Ellery saw something sinister in that from Gary Kelly. I don't know where he just grabs his, his foot here. He, he feels it's a free kick for him right away. But as he falls, there the hand comes out and takes Mark Hughes's right leg from under him. And for that, he's been booked. It's a third Leeds booking, along with Palmer, who we can tell you was booked for a foul, where the replay, which David Ellery didn't have the benefit of, suggested that he got the ball. And the singer, the other Leeds man in the notebook. Worthington. The battle hardened Steve Bruce. It's a real battle on for the champions. Schmeichel's kick goes straight to Wallace. Wallace tries to go straight through the centre, where of course he likes to play. Not in this formation as he allowed that luxury. Kanchelskis in behind Worthington didn't take the ball with him. And we start the second half along the same lines as the first. Happily. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, the chance that Andrew Kajos has got there, I'm amazed. Huge kick up the park, we've cut in from the right side, totally free. The story of the half, for, the first half for Manchester United was not quite connected, choking one or two shots, and that time there again, Kajos just stumbled over the ball. Worthington. There is concern with keeping it in play. Quick word from Nick Collins. Martin, uh, Howard Wilkinson has said that he's not settling for 1 0. We're going to keep taking the game to Manchester United. You'd never have guessed, would you? Well, his players trying to act out those instructions here. Wheeler. Still with it. Dean! There's the second goal. Whelan carved Manchester United apart. And this time from close range, Brian Dean did do the damage. What a run from No Whelan. Look what he is. Look at the red shirts around him. He gets a break there. But from that moment on, it's all about his determination and his skill. He needs someone to arrive on the near post. And who pops in there? Brian Dean. Now he might match the thought, I'll stay at the back post because I'm big and I fancy my chances. But that's what you get if you gamble. We talk about it often. Dean Gamble has got his reward. In the fourth minute of the second half, the substitute strikes. Hughes. Such a celebration behind the goal in which Dean scored, just spilled for a moment out onto the playing surface. A section of the Leeds fans, concern about the crowd behaviour, always for this fixture. Not so many worries today because they've had such a wonderful game, and from Leeds' point of view, such a successful game to concentrate on. But Whelan... ...revelling in this major test of his development. <laughs> well, well, well. He is enjoying it. You don't do this against the champions. Up, up, flick, flick. When Paul Ince is flying in at you, not once, but twice. He's enjoying this, and why shouldn't he? Here's Wallace. Oh. Whelan was homing in at the near post. It didn't bypass Bruce. Well, a thing for Manchester United. How often have we ever had to say that? Well, they mustn't lose another goal. They're two down, and you just feel they lose another. The game is beyond them. McAllister. Wallace. Room in the penalty area. So release the pass to Worthington. McAllister, they're lining up to cross it in. There goes Speed. Rounding Brian McClare. Oh, yes. David Ellery patted what looked like his chest. 
missed and then blew for the free kick. He didn't have a very good view of it, to be fair, the referee. Certainly no one who was facing the play in that far stand thought there was any handball there. But I don't suppose that's a surprise with all of them are Leeds fans. It's... Dave. who had that amazing season last season when he was a surprise selection at the outset played in every game went to the world cup fairy tale stuff well right from the start here Leeds put down the challenge to the champions Manchester United trying to Belatedly, their fans will feel rise to that. Kelly there again defensively. As Ryan Giggs was trying to move in and bring Manchester United back into the picture. He will take the corner. David May is up there along with Hughes as well. But it's 2-0 the deficit now, and this is how it happened. Yeah, look at the wonderful footwork. I mean, it's a determined run, but there was great skill in that run as well, Martin. He can't get a cross in. Peter Schmeichel thinks, that's mine. Brian Dean says, no, it isn't. That's a lovely finish. Does he enjoy it? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> lovely stuff, lovely stuff. Wait till his players see that. <laughs> Wallace. It's he's still got a bit to do. But he won't lie down and accept defeat. Tricky play by Palmer. Could have shirt pulling by Giggs. Speed, that's Hughes careering in. Cantona. He's played out his skin today, Carlton Palmer, he really has. He's been very impressive at the back. But you shouldn't believe that this game's over. You don't win two championships back-to-back -back by giving games up, even when you're 2-0 down at Ellen Road. Cantona. away and he's penalized Cantona and quickly defused any possible temperamental reaction the studs were up there though I think and I, we were wincing up here I think it's an awful tackle I think who he is got him away with it here at Ellen Road I really do I think any other player had made that tackle had been booked it was two-footed and it was dangerous but I think David Ellen has certainly defused the situation very quickly. But just to go back to Noel Whelan, you know, he didn't score, he made, uh, I think, 18 appearances in the league last season, didn't score, and Howard Wilkins has been telling me he was really deflated by that. And suddenly, thanks to a slip by David Seaman, his whole perspective has changed. He scored three goals, he's wandering the ball all over the pitch, he's... Uh, Really harrowing now for the Manchester United defenders. And he's probably doing the exact same things now that he did in those 18 games he didn't score. The thing is, confidence is wonderful when you're a striker. So he was in that group with uh, Robbie Fowler, Julian Joe Chin, Kevin Gallon. Manchester United have got one as well. Paul Scholes, we're going to hear a lot about him, I think. Maybe with a need for Englishman, he might be involved on Wednesday.
been provoked into anything by uh, Mark Hughes's comments. Seem to be pretty voluble. Yeah, he's just gone up with the arms up. Pallister. Speed. That's another try. Callister, Whelan, keeping going leads, full tilt until McClare got it back. This is Kincelskis. Tripped from behind, it's going to be another booking for speed this time. Just couldn't time the sliding tackle with any certainty at all and there was an air of desperation about it he didn't want to leave it to the defenders who were coming out to face Kanchelskis yeah it was clumsy wasn't it it was clumsy will it be costly it could well be now they have Cantona, Owen and Giggs round the ball <laughs> Owen gives the signal Good luck. Kicks from the other side. But it's Irwin who takes off the wall. And that suggests he thought it was heading exactly where he wanted it to. I think it's not sure who as it gets a touch in it. But we'll see from here. And up they go. And I'll tell you what, what an important head that was on the ball. Kicks with the corner. Lukic comes. Kanchelskis. Now trying to slide it through. There's Gary Speed who is in the way. And Jaskis has the players centre back. So much of Manchester United lost their shape. These players were pushing forward. It's definitely a quest for an equaliser. Cantona has only been on the losing side three times for Manchester United in 74 games. And the last time in a league game was a year ago at Chelsea. They were very unlucky then. Remember, he hit the bar from nearly uh, by the halfway line. But there he is again. Eh? He's been immense today, Carlton Palmer. Palmer. He really has been. It looks like he's enjoyed it. It looks like he was relishing this challenge. And he's grown as the game's gone on. He's had a few pieces of good fortune. But everyone needs those. But they're more often than not. That's been what's happened. Carlton Palmer's been coming out of defence with a ball at his feet. Winning tackles, winning headers. He's a winner as a person. He's a very bubbly man. Whelan. He deserves something for himself, but he hasn't quite got it here. We can have another look at the goal, Mark. And what I want you to watch is this area here. Now, watch Brian Dean. You would normally think a big lad would pull to the far post because he fancies it. But look at the determined way he drives across the front. Watch the checks. There he goes. He's in at the front post, and he got his reward. Wonderful stuff. once more oh, it was blocked by it. it's surely handball I don't know whether David Ellery saw it Cantona Lukic out in front of it speed no offside Masinga Whelan in the centre Dean at closer quarters joining Whelan now speed's coming in as well a lot of Leeds players up there this is Brian Dean he's lost it he couldn't reclaim it at the right moment and Schmeichel was able to make the save he was a bit unlucky you know I think it arrived at him very quickly expecting Masinga to try something look at that tries to get it out of his feet it's mixed up and United get lucky when they need to Dean's header on Masinga offside Alec Ferguson wouldn't have been pleased to see Brian Dean come on even in an unfamiliar position because uh, he will with his excellent recall of past matches know what Dean has done to them in the past with Sheffield United (laughs) 
Wallace. That comes for Dean. And the second time. Wallace, who is in one of those uh, passive offside positions, suddenly found himself close to the ball. It was a wonderful cross. He dug it out so well. It looked like he was going nowhere. His foot under the ball and stood it up very well to the back post. Dean. Getting the drop on Irwin, who thought the ball was going to run out. Kelly, quickly up in support. And speed! Great ball. The ball made up Gary Speed's mind. It was angled, it was ahead of him. The defenders were stood, Speed was at pace, and that made all the difference. Wonderful ball from Kelly. Wallace. Ball initially from Whelan, then from Worthington, on to Wallace. Dean can guide it down here for McAllister. It's recognised the threat. Battled against Dean again. Giggs losing out, taken on by Speed. This has got free kick for Manchester United. And a chance to say a special welcome to our viewers from British servicemen abroad, as far abroad as Bosnia and the Falkland Islands, I'm sure you're enjoying this as much as to the rest of us. Manchester United make a double change, taking off Ryan Giggs, not for the first time this season, and Brian McClare for Lee Sharp and Nicky Butt. Another 19-year-old, a squad mate of Whelan's with the England youth team. That's a midfield player. It's a tall order for Manchester United to turn this around. Bruce, though, with the sort of effort that's required in these circumstances. What a reliable performer Nigel Worthington is. Must be a manager's dream. He certainly had Wilkinson's dream. He signed him for Notts County. Signed him for Sheffield Wednesday, and now he's brought him here to Elland Road. Well, on goal attempts, it's pretty even. Recovery time left for the champions, though. Around 25 minutes. And Jelskis, where there seems to be very little room. Cantona lets it run for Hughes. But was the uh, player to the right of Mark Hughes, trying to make the right angle. Yeah, everything closed around Mark Hughes. There's no space for him to go. He drops at his feet there. He's looking, he's looking, there's no one wide. Nicky Butt tries to make the run. But the ball had to be... Oh, it was threaded through a small gap. Sharp. Actually played in the centre of midfield against Wimbledon with Ince out. Much more used to see him like this galloping down the left, but if it comes to sheer pace, he'll find that Gary Kelly is a capable competitor. I think more than capable. I mean, Sharp's got the edge on him. He gets the start, and you think, if it holds up, is Kelly going to get back? He just might have done it. He is quick. Going for the same ball there. For a moment from our vantage point, it looks as though there might have been 
a case of uh, clash of heads from two players of the same side. Kelly. McAllister. He's a bit reckless from Butt. Who uh, has that edge to his play in midfield. supporters and indeed the Leeds players who felt that Manchester United when the dust has settled were much better than them in the two meetings last season. Ince fight was up against Andre Kanchelskis. It's not over yet Mr Tanner. Not by a long way. I'm sure the first person to agree with you would be a certain Mr Wilkinson. <laughs> We were talking about his pace, and here's a great example. I'm sure Lee Shack thinks he's in there. I'm sure he thinks he's got himself through it an opening, but not to be. Kelly just closed the door. Sharp with the corner. Oh. And, uh, it breaks back for Sharp again, and Bart, who'd gone in towards the near post in the first place. Hughes! Realised he got a bit of room there and thought there was time for the extra touch, even that close to goal. It wasn't a good enough touch. And that's unusual. And they get away with this one. Nigel Wellington in the back post is the one who clears it. The advantage of having a man on the post, but when it comes back out, Nicky Butt stands up a lovely ball. And you think Hughes will just take it and hit it. I thought he'd actually just nod it across goal mark. You see the white shirt between him and goal. It was really a tough decision. Lukic hurt in that skirmish. Howard Wilkinson just took a couple of uh, bottles of drink to his players there, which is not usually what the manager does, so there might have been a message with it, I think. Jeff Gladley checking out Lukic. last season after Leeds lost at Liverpool it was a 2-0 defeat in their fifth match 2-0 up here for the much haunted victory if it materialised Weatherall Dean and that Steve Bruce virtually saying Peter where are you come and Get it. Wallace. May, with a little bit more determination, made it for Manchester United. There's Palmer again. He had to pull out for the second attempt, but Leeds didn't really lose much because of that. A singer with good acceleration past Bruce in the first place. Irwin. Now it's Kanchelskis, Cantona and Hughes waiting to make their moves in the middle. A short across, they tried to tailor it for Paul Ince. Gary Speed got in the way and it's a Manchester United corner with 20 minutes left. Is the time to try and turn the tide. Now it would be the perfect time for them to strike. The fist of Lukic denied them. Leeds had everyone back. 
Oh, Wheeling well, got out quickly, though. Hughes. Pallister. Here's May. Cantona to Sharp, to Hughes, is it this time? Look at... Here's May. Cantona to Sharp, to Hughes, is it this time? Look at... An amazing block there from close range, a header back from Button, Look at... Just there again! Well, his second one was a formality, Mark. He just looked at, helped it over the bar, watched it over. The first one was a magnificent ball in there. Look at the way he takes it perfectly. You think, that's them back in the game. But look, he spread himself so well, and then was so quick to get back on his feet again and watch that one go over the top. What a crucial save this might prove to be. It just dropped over the top with Lukic in a perfect position to make sure that there was no harm done in the end. He didn't do badly either, the young centre-back, did he? He made it the second one, the header, very difficult for Hughes. It's... Oh, Brian Dean had to be careful there. He's given a penalty, a penalty to Manchester United, a lifeline for Manchester United. Well, I'm astounded. My first reaction is this is outside the box. The initial tackle, I think, comes there. There's a tackle. It's a yard outside the box. Ince falls inside the box. This is a lifeline. The referee is wrong. It's as simple as that. A free kick, it should have been the decision. Dean is booked as he would have been had it been given outside the area. Well, now... What a scenario we have here, because the Manchester United penalty taker is Eric Cantona. To face not just John Lukic, but all the hostility that the Leeds fans can muster, but David Ellery has checked with the linesman on the far side. Well, they're both wrong. David Pugh. And the pictures have proved it. Oh. Cantona, who's been a master of these situations all his career. But even his considerable nerve must be strained now. Will it be strained to breaking point? So vital for Manchester United. Cantona does the trick without, it seems, batting an eyelid. No, he's not easily phased as Monsieur Cantona. And this is a real test of his nerve. It really was, and look how cool he slots it in. But it's a lifeline that the referee has given them. Wonderful run from Ince. It was a wonderfully positive run from Paul Ince. But the challenge took place a yard, a good yard outside the box. And Leeds are doubly punished. So Cantona scores for the first time against his old club at a critical stage. And he might not be a loser here back at Ellen Road in this match. Here comes it. Manchester United will bomb on now. Cantona keeps it in, does he? No. Well, well, well. <laughs> uh, here's the tackle, you can see it from here. Now, there's the challenge, it happens there. What is that, a yard, Martin, yard and a half? Outside the box, he's still not even in the box there, Brian Dean, you can see that. Even when the tackle's complete, Ince is two yards in the box, Dean is still outside the box. But both linesman and referee consulted, penalty decision stood. We don't know just how costly it'll be, of course. 15 minutes to go before that. Leeds will have been taking nothing for granted, but they were just approaching the phase in the game where their belief in victory was beginning to be really strong. I think it's seen off thing. so much, Lukic had made those saves. I think the important thing, they were just approaching the time where not only their belief, but the belief of the Manchester United players that they could rescue the game may have been on the way. Back in abundance now. Cantona. Weatherall gets there, but 
coming in. Worthington in trouble. Leeds in difficulties. Wallace. Leeds have a player down hurt. But Wallace is away. Wheeler. Good covering by Pallister. And David Ellery won't stop the play here. Hughes. Cantona. Hughes. Well, he will know. That's another, that's another chance, Martin, isn't it? Into the edge of the box, Eric Cantor thinks it over. Now, we often talk about Hughes' ability to volley the ball, but that's not a Mark Hughes special there. He doesn't often miss the target by that much. Manchester United also have a player in trouble, Paul Ince, who's had this tendonitis in the knee. But he stayed down a long time, Carlton Palmer. A lot of activity here, Nicky, but look how strong he goes in. He does go in for the ball, and he catches Palmer, there's no doubt about that. And he, that would be painful. That would be painful. Well, Alex Ferguson sometimes feels that there's such a jealousy about Manchester United that the whole world is against him. Today, the referee has been for him at a vital stage. Just wonder what he's thinking, Martin. Look at the time, 13 minutes to go. He's telling his players to think. He's got Chris Flair Fairclough on the bench. Does he throw on a defender? Does he tighten it up? Does he take what they have? Or does he just say, oh... I'll let the boys who have got me this far carry on. Well, of course, Carlton Palmer's problem might take that decision out of his hands. He might have to uh, have to make it, the point I'm trying to make. And Chris Fairclough, of course, is a capable man to go into the centre of defence, not to, to mark Cantona man for man, but just to keep the shape of the back line. There's a worry about John Lukic, though, who's had treatment as well, of course, they can use Fairclough and Lukic under the new uh, legislation. Uh, Fairclough and Beanie, rather, under the new uh, legislation. Which permits a goalkeeper to be brought on at any time. Kelly clears. Well, just look at that, Mark. Look how many white shots are deep, deep, deep in their own half at the moment. But working off a Leeds United body for another corner. This is the exceptional edge that a trophy taking team has. And the game looked up for Manchester United. Admittedly, in very strange circumstances, they're back in it. Mark Beanie wondering whether he's going to be required here. Lukic not 100%. Can Manchester United make something of that fact? He's trying to head it back. Kanchelskis. This is Cantona. Tries the shot. They find it hard to take if he scores again here. <laughs> Just... Uh, break in this incident patch packed match to tell you about what's happening tomorrow night prospect of many more incidents to come Tottenham Hotspur Jurgen Klinsmann and all against Southampton from White Hart Lane that's live on Monday night football on Sky Sports Well, ten minutes to go, it says on the clock, but there's going to be a lot longer than that. Lengthy treatment to Palmer. I noticed David Ellie's looking at his watch every time John Lukic goes behind the goal mark to pick up the ball. He suggests that he's looking at that as well as time wasting. It's Hughes, four forward for Manchester United. 
so they'll have to put the brakes on now. Wallace. That's Ince again. Making, making sure that Manchester United continue the initiative that they've got now. of injustice you feel in the Leeds ranks and mustn't allow that to dominate their thoughts they still lead it's a slender one now Irwin and Dean let's see going to go off here no a foul that might well have been deemed a bookable offence Henry, the referee, has now called Dean over, and maybe it's just a very, very strong talking to. Well, I think this is the time when the referees use his initiative. I think if that happened and Brian Dean hadn't been bookmarked, he'd have received the yellow card for that tackle. I mean, I'm not saying for one minute we should have people gone off, and I don't want them to go off. But what we do now, look at this, look at this. Every Leeds player mark there. And what they mustn't do is allow that to happen. They've got to leave maybe even one up there to allow themselves an out ball. Because you just feel if they sit back like that, and Manchester United might eventually just break them down. Kanchels gets amazed right in there. Hughes, of course. <laughs> What's that for? <laughs> Easy to lip read. But the first challenge, I think, was what the referee took exception to. Now, there he goes, Hughes is up, his eyes are on the ball. And I can't believe he's given a free kick for that. And he's but quite right to look puzzled, Mark Hughes, quite right. blood he's gone a long way and wanted to go all the way well he yeah, had it was a rush of blood you see in the edge of the pitch look at mark hughes just late to me just late to me i can strike from here but david may fancied a bit of glory he's getting caught offside Well, he's got his watch on this again, David Ellery. In the present circumstances, this is dramatic enough. But if you put it into the context of Leeds against Manchester United, since Leeds have been back with the big boys and the lack of victories, it's spellbinding stuff. Leeds looking so good when they got the second goal to 
pick up the prize here, which would be so precious for them. More than just the three Premiership points, it would mean so much for their confidence. A huge, huge boost for the battles that lie ahead and a long season ahead. And the belief here that honours can be brought to Ellen Road at the end of the campaign. Cantona, but it might not be. Ince. Kanchelskis. May is available to clip in the cross. Kelly. But, and the referee that time helping Leeds. Kelly. Can he get away from Pallister? And Irwin. It's a great run from Gary Kelly. And Whelan hoping that there would be a culmination with a cross. Cantona. Worthington on the weaker foot. This thing is going to be brought off, and it is time for the fair club factor. Yeah, but Chris Brown Dean up front now. Chris Fairclough is definitely on now. What we have, we hold. Straight away, Fairclough wins the ball from Cantona. I'm not so sure he's going to mind Mark and Martin. He may, you know, he may just play in this right-hand side. Hughes. Losing Fairclough. Still Hughes. And the protector got a foot in. Oh, there's life in this game, yeah, there really is. Chris Fairclough had a hernia operation recently, got fit again, then went down with gastroenteritis. David May. David didn't. Two minutes plus stoppage time to go. between Howard Wilkinson as manager of Leeds and uh, Alec Ferguson, manager of Manchester United. Six draws, six Manchester United wins. Those statistics alone tell you how much this would mean to everyone connected with Leeds United Football Club. They've still got some desperate moments to endure, you sense here. But it's been wonderful, isn't it, from the first whistle, Martin? It's been like two heavyweights going into battle. And from the, the first whistle, there was no sparring or, or testing of anything. They just went at it. No one more so than Noel Whelan in that respect. Schmeichel gets there before him. Just the feeling of injustice, Andy, that will perhaps in the end not be relevant if Leeds hold on. Of course, the human factor is always there in football. The players make mistakes, as do referees. Wallace! A push, surely. That was an easy decision for David Ellery. The excitement unrelenting here. A scene of so many superlatives, but not yet. A definite outcome. McAllister, is that handball? Referee's given it. It means perhaps more to him than anyone else in the ground. Sharp. Hughes, a lot of Leeds players between him and the goal. They'll have to come back to go forward, Manchester United. Irwin. Absolute bedlam at Ellen Row. Cantona somehow finding space amidst all the confusion. Oh! Steve Bruce was going in. 
Well, they should score. It's as simple as that. They should score. It's a glorious opportunity. It's a free header. I tell you, Brucey doesn't miss many of them, Martin. He really doesn't. What a chance. Beautifully flighted cross. Tempting, teasing. In comes Bruce. Oh, so close. Well, we've talked all the time about narrow margins between these two teams. That sums it up in one split second. They're going through agonies here. Blow the whistle is the message. And he's blown it here against uh, Noel Whelan. Another booking for Leeds. I was wondering whether Schmeichel was going to be penalised. Wallace. Schmeichel has to kick it forward long and quickly. Pallister. Two minutes of time added on. Fairclough. Back for Bruce. Hughes wants it played forward quickly. Bruce decides to get a better angle from Kanchelskis. Weather all the way. Critically. Pallister. Wallace helping out. Dean is there. McAllister trying to calm things down. Whelan can't hold it up. He can't stay up because he's been tripped by it. He's earned a free kick. And that's all he needed to do. The pressure relieved. At least for the second. connected with Leeds United off the pitch seems to be shaking with tension here Bruce Cantona with the merest of touches Hughes it is 13th time lucky for Leeds despite a penalty given against Brian Dean which shouldn't have been Cantona scored Manchester United might have been back in it at 2-1. But David Weatherall's goal in the 13th minute set Leeds off on the right note. They came here to play today with a really attacking attitude. Dean himself got the second, the crucial goal after coming on a substitute. And for Howard Wilkinson, a win at last over Alec Ferguson in these mega matches between the two Uniteds. They've been so eventful since Ellen Road emerged from the dark days of Division 2. A sweet, sweet success. Cantona a loser for only the fourth time in 75 games for Manchester United. Paul Ince battled proudly in the latter stages, but the champions have come unstuck for the first time in defence of their title. They're joined on ten points now by their conquerors today. An occasion to cause revelry for the Leeds fans in particular. But their satisfaction that much greater because of the presence of a certain Monsieur Cantona amongst the losers today. Leeds have laboured long and hard in the past. A victory much vaunted in these parts is theirs today. Let's join Nick Collins. Got Gary McAllister and Noel Whelan with me. Gary, how sweet a win is that for you? Oh, it's very sweet, but we're, we're not going to crow about it. You know, they've had a stronghold in this game for a long, long time, so... We're going to enjoy it, but we're not going to crow about it. Is this an indication that you're stronger than last year or that they're perhaps weaker than last year? Oh, what, we're going to, what I'm going to say is that if we're in there challenging at Christmas, we've got a wee chance of maybe getting the championship back at Ellen Road. Noel, you've made a terrific start to the season. Three goals coming into this game and, and, and a crucial role in the Brian Dean game. How, how is it you feel you've improved so much this year? Well, as I say, a year in the Premier League means a hell of a lot, you know. It's very strong out there and you've got to get used to the pace. But, you know, I'm getting there now. I'm playing alongside Gary and quality players. Makes it very easy. How tense a game was that in the closing stages? Uh, it was very tense, you know. 20 minutes ago and they got the penalty. You know, he put them in it. They lifted themselves. We had to defend. And Les did great, you know. He's got three points. That's what we needed. Gary, what will this do for Leeds United's self-belief, do you think? Yeah, surely we can go for this game and, and hopefully get a little run going. You know, even though in this early stage of the season we're still trailing by a few points, Newcastle are flying at the moment. So we've we'll just got to keep plugging away. We'll get Coventry next week, and if we've set, set the standards today, if we can maintain them, we might have a chance. 
Got to ask you about your boots, Noel. One green one, one white one. I gather there's a bit of a story behind this. Tell it. Well, I bought them in Malaysia when we were on tour of the Lotto. And uh, I just like, I prefer kicking with them, basically, right foot. It's, it's been a bit of a good luck charm, you know, three games, three goals. So I just carried on, you know, I keep doing well, so I'll keep wearing them. Lucky boots. Listen, Noel Whelan's been named the calling man of the match, Gary. Perhaps you'd uh, present the uh, champagne to him. Well done, lads.